Hi guys, Mr. TC for those already of housing and today I'm going to use a free palette and some scrap wood to create a nice wine arc. And here is the palette we're gonna work with. Here I'm gonna show you both sides and the side we're gonna work with. And of course I'm gonna move to my favorite workbench in order to start working with that palette. As we will need to remove the middle part, I'm using here my jigsaw to start cutting. Keep in mind that we will need only the part in the middle. Even if I decided to go step by step, you can of course cut everything in one go. Alright, finally, here is the middle section I was telling you about and looking to have. In order to start sanding as much as possible, I'm gonna be using here my meter saw stand to attach that pallet. Then, when all is fixed and secured, I'm starting here to sand with my belt sander. And as you may know, you will have a ton of sanding with pallet project, but at the end, it's very important to make sure that you smooth down all sides of this palette. And of course, without forgetting the middle block section. Alright, now that everything is well sanded, I'm here looking up for the imperfections and also looking how I'm going to attach it at the end. Okay, let's bring back this table and take a look how we're gonna insert the bottle of wine. Hey, hey, look like someone is having some fun. <laughs> so here, I'm going to use four bottles of wine and place them on one side to look here at the best way to design the holes. The first thing I'm doing here is to find the center of the wood to after that trace a line all along then moving again with the bottles of wine in order to create each pattern which will allow me to insert them in the holes on one side I'm first starting to drill the small holes with a drill bit of 4 cm in diameter to then repeat the same measuring process on the other side and this to create the big holes. I have to say I was quite lucky this time because I found a round tape having the same diameter as the bottle itself. I'm gonna first start by drilling small holes in the middle of each circle in order to easily insert my jigsaw blade to start cutting following the lines and as you can see it's not very easy at all to after that use my narrow band belt sander in order to smooth down the edges as much as possible haha and now the best part trying all the bottles and when adding the third bottle of wine, I realized that the big hole was too small. So as you can imagine, I will have to make it a little bit bigger. And one of the other best part with this design is the fact that you can insert the bottles also inside. <laughs> Alright, enough excitement. Let's move on. And now, in order to round up a little bit the edges, I will be using my router with my chamfer bit and of course on both sides 
Now that each holes are ready, I'm going to move to some sanding. And note that here, I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper. I will be applying here a first layer of white paint, which will be covered after the drying process with some transparent spray lacquer. Alright, so now that we are all done with the first part, time to move and to create the cover doors for the first side. And note that I'm going to be using the same pattern that I've used for the floating shelf. I'm going to be first tracing all the lines in order to know where to cut. And as the piece of wood is a little bit larger than the opening, I will be removing 2cm on the one side. And to make the cut, this time I'm going to be using my plunge saw. Now that I have the right measurement, I can move on and trace the lines in order to create the two doors. And if you are planning to do the same, I would advise you to clamp first the piece of wood with some clamps. And now that we are kind of done with creating the doors for the first side, I have picked up some scrap wood in my workshop in order to create the closing panel for the back side. And using again my plunge saw for the cut. All right, perfectly done. Then, after converting my workbench into a router table, I will work on removing a little bit of wood on each edges to smooth down the design. Then I'm going to be replacing my chamfer bit with the dado bit to be able to create a small opening all along the piece of wood and I'm referring here about the one going in the back side and this opening will help me to insert the LED light. Then, after checking that the main frame fits well, I'm going to be clamping the doors on the top in order to drill some opening. And please note that this is for nothing special. I'm just creating some holes in order to change the design. And if you decide to create it for yourself, of course you can do whatever you want. After slightly sanding all pieces, I'm now moving to some painting. And when I'm done with the painting, time to glue the LED strip on the back side. And for this I'm going to be using some super glue to make sure it stays in place. After fixing the LED strip, I'm going to be using a piece of wood on each side during the drying process. So now we're going to go and fix the doors, as I said before, using the same patterns that the floating shelf.
then drilling some small holes to insert the door handles. Et voilà, all good to go. And keep in mind here that it's going to be placed in a vertical position. After waiting a few minutes, now time to remove the piece of wood clamping the LED strip. Then placing it on the back side. In order to fix to the back side, please note that I will be using here my nail gun. And now finally, we are moving to the final stage by creating some support for the glasses. To clean a little bit the workshop, I have decided to use some scrap wood and leftover. Here I've decided to create a very simple design because I didn't want to create something too difficult and too long. I won't be providing too much details here, but I will be working as usual on a free plan that you can use in order to create it yourself. But as you know, when using power tools, be careful as much as possible, because as you know, safety always comes first. And now the final touch, adding all the glasses support on the main frame. And not for this that I will be using just simple screws. Then cutting the metallic pipes which are gonna be attached to the walls. But of course, first on the wine rack. And here is the first look on the final placement. It looks gorgeous already. So, as you can see, I'm very happy with the design, especially after using some spray lacquer, which is protecting the wood and at the same time giving the design some kind of glowing effect, which is very nice. Alright guys, that's it for this one. And I hope that you can really use this general design in order to make one for yourself, use it, sell it, or give it away as a present for family members or even friends. Do anything you want, as soon as you're having fun doing it. And of course, I hope that you like this one. If it's the case, feel free to let me know in the comments below. 
And remember that we are a community, so you can find other ideas from other members. If you would like to share your own ideas, feel free to join us. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.